Alrighty, guys. So I'm not sure at what point I left this project last. Um, so I'll just do a quick a quick run through. So it's a as you know a 1989 um, 300T as in the petrol version, converted now to the OM606. Not fully converted, as you all know. This project is is getting on a bit. That's my intercooler is mounted up and. Um, I have those offset uh, silicone hose. I'm pretty sure I, 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 I showed you that in the previous uh, video. So uh, I'm just going to guess. I think I'm actually just going to go with a straight uh, piece of stainless steel tubing for there. Because I think the bumper is going to be rubbing on it. So I think stainless steel is the only way to make sure that uh, kind of longevity of life, if you know what I mean. Rather than the aluminium, it will just rub right through. I don't think there's any way of me avoiding it rubbing. Um, as well as that, I, I can probably weld on a couple of brackets, maybe hold that stainless steel, steel tubing kind of uh, against the radiator brackets here. That's a possibility or some kind of bolt-in system for it. Anyway, that's, that's one thing. Um, the turbo, uh, so I don't know if I was last, when I was last talking to you, did I have the welder or not, but since then I've basically gotten a TIG welder and I've spent an awful lot of time trying to learn how to TIG weld with varying results as I say it's a bit of a um, it's a bit of a roller coaster trying to learn how to TIG uh, but anyway there's trials and tribulations and it, I'm sort of getting a little bit better now but it's still not great um, so I have since offset the turbo so I had those flanges made up I'm pretty sure I showed you them already I had these flanges made up by a local guy, um, a local firm with a uh, plasma table. So that's the plasma. As you can see there, this weld here, the one that goes onto the manifold, is a turbo weld. And then the one underneath here is actually pretty decent, or it's okay. And the reason for that was the first, I was pulling my hair out, I got all excited about getting back at the, at the project really like you know eager to get going and i mocked it up and everything i never cleaned off the flange so the flange had that kind of browning uh, oil not oil but browning kind of finish that it has um uh, and i never i never i never polished it off or anything to make sure it was lovely and clean before i started to weld uh, i was pulling my hair out for that day didn't even consider it such a minor obvious point it's something you would do in your in every practice I never considered it. I was just too excited to get get out. Anyway, so that that well down there is not great. It will it'll be fine. If it, if it fails, it fails. I'll I'll, um, I'll redo it then. The well up here. Next day I cleaned it. Got got grand wells there. Um, also had to clock the turbo uh, to allow for the new angle. You can see there we are skating that line nice and finely. Um, it's doesn't not touching or anything. Uh, it is a teeny tiny gap. Um, so I don't know if that's going to be an issue, but uh, I doubt it will be because it'll, this will move at the same rate as the engine will. So it, it shouldn't touch. If it does touch, we'll have to obviously do something about that too. Um, maybe at the same time, if that touches, we'll we'll redo the the offset, or I'll just get a bigger turbo. <laughs> so I also had to extend out my um, my bracket here as well, which looks a bit ugly, but it's actually not too bad when you get close up. It just looks ugly because it's all discolored, you know. Um, that's it there, that long that seam line. I know. So that's that. The I started on making the downpipe, so you can see here I have a little piece of that piece of black you see going around. That's a piece of sponge holding that pipe in a position where it's not fouling on anything, uh, with the preference being closer to the manifold than to the wall of the car because um, I, the manifold is going to be hot anyway, so it really makes no odds. Um, whereas I don't want to necessarily overheat the wall. I think I'm going to get heat transfer in that corner anyway. Um, so maybe I might put some reflective tape there, um, you know, he's, he's, uh, or, um, heat shielding tape on the on that corner just here, if that makes sense. There is already this tape here, but maybe I'll just extend it further down uh, underneath here. So anyway, that's the that's just a pipe resting there to give me a, a kind of a datum for making my downpipe. So then let's go over here to. 
I say, bear in mind this, I'm not a good welder. So I got um, the existing uh, flange that comes on those, uh, the T14 turbo, I think it's T14 turbo. And um, I basically just fixed it to a straight piece, maybe two inches wide of three inch. Um, so that didn't go that well, but it's not the end of the world either. It's, it's okay, that'll be fine. Then I attached a 45, a clocked 45 pre-made piece. Again, the pieces you're seeing here that have the, basically all of it is, is basically fusion welded, or not fusion welded, um, yeah, fusion welded, as in they're just sitting up nice and tight against each other and then all you have to do is just apply um, the, the arc to it. And then the areas you're seeing where there's fill in might be in a, sm a slight bit of a gap or something in it, and then I would have had to put in a bit of uh, filler just to stop it burning a hole. So that's that, and then I did the same here. Again, not the prettiest. But all in all, actually, not a bad. Like there's, there's looking all right, isn't it? And again, that is a clocked ninety, um, fusion welded as well. There was actually no filler in this one whatsoever. You know, now because these are mandrel bent, this isn't perfectly circular meeting this. So there was a lip. Where there's a lip just here, and as such, you're then you're you're heating this side and then stepping the puddle down. To bring it onto this. So let me just bring this over. Now, please bear in mind that I'm, I've never, I, I had it, I've got a TIG welder a couple of weeks here, you know. So if I sit that there, we are looking something like that. And then that'll bring me straight down out through that gap. I think it's quite pretty as a as a downpipe, you know, has a nice shape to it. I don't know if that makes any difference, but you know, to me it does. The thing about doing the, the fusion welds, which I got from watching the skid factory, was if you can't um, if you can't back purge or if you don't have the finances to be paying for two different argon tanks and everything like that to back purge, um, which I'm not back purging here. If you get a nice fusion weld, I don't know if you're seeing that. Let me see if I can get this camera in here. The sugaring is really minor. You see that? Very, very slight. They're tiny, tiny bits. So um, that's the way to do it then, because it should, as soon as you add in your filler, that sugaring just increases massively and then you're actually losing the diameter of, your, uh, of the turbo or of the pipe. So that's my current three inch downpipe to that point. I'm going to find the bracket, which I've, or the, the clamp, which I seem to have lost for this, clamp that up, and then I'm going to jack the car up and start working uh, my way down and out. Uh, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this as far as a flexi, um, and then I'm going to wrap then the flexi, then put a little section onto that, hopefully. That's my intention, hopefully. And then um, put a V-band on it. So then from that point out, I can start running my, my pipe straight out for the, for the rest of the thing. I think this is the hard part done, I think. I don't know, I've never made an exhaust before. I'm gonna wrap this with heat shrink, or not heat shrink, uh, heat shield, that um, canvas stuff. I'm gonna wrap this as far as the flexi. So hopefully that'll be passed all the vulnerable stuff here. Um, and then I say I'll put in a bit of street, uh, heat shielding as well. But at least I'm getting back at it, guys. I This is one of these things that just keeps going uh, on the back burner. Um, but I'm, I'm hopefully hopefully getting somewhere with it now. I was, the, the problem with it is, and I know um, others probably have experienced this too, when you get into a project, you get this kind of, you get to a point where you've got these difficult jobs to do and there's a fear um, involved with it. So like the likes of making a turbo, I would have had, I'd have this job, this project done a lot sooner if I just paid somebody to make that turbo or that, um, that exhaust. But uh, I wanted to do it myself. I said to myself that was the best way to do it. I'm not in a rush to have this vehicle on the road, even though I wanted to be on the road. Um, so I thought, 
look, it's best time to learn how to TIG weld and, and do that kind of thing is now. But with that came this kind of um, stagnation or this kind of feeling of just uh, fear of, of stepping forward to actually do it. The big job was scary, but the problem is it never goes away. Um, so from that perspective, I'm happy that I started. Ha starting is, you know, as I say, 90% of the battle. Anyway, guys, just a, a quick, quick um, check-in. There's a no new car in the, in the garage as well. Uh, a little silver micro. <laughs> this is um, from my wife. It's a one liter uh, uh, automatic. She can only drive automatic. They're both automatics, but she can only drive automatic. So I picked up this. Um, it needs a little bit of welding in the rear arches, but nothing too major. I kind of dig it, you know, I like it. Um, obviously, I don't like the alloys, but apart from that, uh, it's a nice little clean micro. All right, guys, I'll check in with you again. Cheers. Bye.